A few years ago, I embarked down the road of trying to make my own motion capture suit. I volunteer for a nonprofit organization called Spark Studio that teaches animation to middle school students. They came to me with a problem in that they didn't have a lot of money, it was all volunteer, and they wanted to be able to take the kids' motions and put it onto 3D characters. So this video is a tutorial on how I made the suits, the theory behind them, how you can build your own suit, and some of the lessons learned along the way. Have you ever wanted to make your own motion capture suit? Out of off-the-shelf components, I'm going to show you how to use the code that I have in simple, low-cost components to make your own motion capture suit that can capture directly into Blender in real time. It can also save to an SD card and be mapped to any character you want to at a later date. So if you want to see how to make this suit, stay tuned and hang on, because here we go. <laughs> this is so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Bosch BNO 055 inertial measurement unit. Basically think of it as about three grains of rice on the circuit board. And it has nine sensors. They call it nine degree of freedom sometimes, but basically it's a sensor that can sense acceleration in all directions so it has three accelerometers it has three gyroscopes on it so it can actually sense twist and how much it's changing in all three axes of twist it has three magnetometers that can sense all the magnetics in a room and even magnetic north so if you let it calibrate long enough it can actually tell where magnetic north is and it also has a processor on it that combines all nine of those sensors together into a single vector so this part basically knows with absolute certainty to a high degree of accuracy exactly what angle it is at because it can sense the acceleration due to gravity at 9.81 meters per second squared straight down so it knows where down is knows where magnetic north is and it uses the gyros and the accelerometers to combine it all together to give you a really good idea of the rotation of this device in space it's used by your cell phone to determine whether you're in portrait or landscape mode um, but it's a really cheap sense, well, it's about $25 for this board, but it gives you an absolute rotation vector that you can hook into an Arduino and then send into Blender to position a character. It's an incredibly powerful part. And we're going to use, in this tutorial, we're going to basically encapsulate one of these into a plastic encasement that you can put on your body and then connect together with simple Ethernet cables into an Arduino and we can make our own mash Ugh. and we can make our own motion capture suit so i've placed all the code that you need to work on this project in a github repo i'll put the link in the description but basically we have several folders in here and we've got build procedures on how to build the suit we've got blender files for putting motion captures onto and we've got some arduino code for the suit itself and the python blender folder contains all all of the actual code that you use inside of Blender. Captures is a folder that includes uh, several captures that uh, I did during testing. And there's even some schematic diagrams that we'll look through in this video. So go ahead and click on the code download zip button. And when you click on it, it'll download the zip and you can unpack it and we'll go through the files in the rest of this video. After you've unpacked the files, you can open up the suit's bill of material that shows you all of the parts for the suit. Um, for the chest piece that does all the controlling and all the breakup, so it's basically the complexity of the suit, it's, it's about $100. And for the waist, uh, it's another $50 or so, but most of the cost is $300 for all the sensors. They're about $22 to $25 a piece when you buy from DigiKey. The suit works fine without all the sensors, so just order as many as you want to track, and that, that would bring down the cost of the suit quite a bit. If you open the Build Procedures folder, you'll see a chest build procedure in here, and you can go through and look at how to build all the pieces, all the individual steps for soldering wires and making the entire chest assembly. And when you're all done, it shows you how what it looks like completed um, 
and how to wire up the LCD display and everything in the suit. So if you go to the Blender Files folder inside of the GitHub page, um, there's three files in here. Ignore the move rig.blend, we'll use that later for getting captures from the suit, but the Waste, Arduino, and Excel case blend files all have in them the 3D printable models to create the enclosures for your suit. Um, they're all on top of each other in this file, but basically you can 3D print each one of these, export them out as an STL file, and then print them on your printer, and you have all the cases and pieces you need to create your suit. Here you can see the chest build in progress. It doesn't have the shield on it, but you can see in the lower left corner, the bottom, the right hand side, and the top, the ethernet connectors. And the I squared CMUX is on the right, and the IMU for the chest is buried underneath the Arduino, and in the top you can see tucked in the Bluetooth adapter that I dribbled glue on. If you don't know what I'm talking about by dribbling glue on and what all these components are, don't worry, we'll get into them more in the theory section later. To build the sensors, I just take the development board for the IMU and I clip the connector off and solder wires to it. Then I take some Ethernet jacks from sparkfun.com and solder the wires to those and put them into the 3D printed enclosure and bolt it all together. Before we get started, I'm just going to describe what's called an RS-232 bus. This is the bus that the um, Arduino uses to talk to the PC. And basically it's a peer-to-peer -peer bus that has basically two people hooked onto it talking to each other. There's no address or data lines. It sends one byte at a time. And what the data means must be defined by the user. And there's a limit to two people on the bus. So this is an I2C bus. Should I bore you to death and talk forever about it? I recorded the what an I2C bus does like 50 times. And it never came out good. So just stare at this diagram. The Arduino is the controller, and it can talk to as many people as you want to put on the bus. In our design, we're going to have some IMUs, some real-time clocks, and an LCD display all on the bus. But basically, an I2C bus allows you to have lots of things that can talk to each other. There's a clock and a data line. When the clock line's shorted to ground, everybody reads the data line, whether it's high or low. And so you can run the bus at any speed. And it's a great way to hook lots of peripherals and you don't have to define the protocol because each part tells you how it's going to respond in its data sheet. So you have to read the data sheets and you have to program and you have to figure out how to talk to each part. Thankfully, most parts come with an Arduino library that you can just drop in and just say, Arduino, go give me the rotation of that IMU. And the IMU responds and gives you the rotation and you don't really care how it does it. This is the Adafruit data logging shield. Now a shield is a circuit board that attaches to your Arduino. And this particular board for $14 allows you to insert an SD card. And Adafruit has created a simple library for saving any text that you have inside of your code onto the SD card attached to this shield. It also has a real time clock so you can actually set the time and date and timestamp your files. Although I don't think I use that in this project. The other cool feature of this is a breadboard that we can add extra connections and solder wires together and make headers for various connections inside of our uh, motion capture suit. This project uses the BNO055 IMU as I said before. It's actually a very complex part, but from an implementation standpoint it's very simple. You just provide power and ground. You give it I squared C, S clock, and data. That's the protocol that it talks to the Arduino with. And it has a separate address select that lets you select the address that the part shows up on the I squared C bus. Unfortunately, you only get two addresses, 28 and 29 in hex. And you have to choose one of those two for the part. So we have a slight problem. How are we going to have a part that only has two selectable addresses on a bus that doesn't allow two parts to have the same address, and we need 15 of them in this design. This is an I squared C multiplexer by Adafruit. It's a, it's a TCA 9548A part that you can buy, and basically what it does is it connects the main bus to any of a bunch of sub buses one at a time. So we can put two of each of our sensors on each one of these buses, and use the I2C bus to select which bus we connect one at a time and therefore we can hook all the parts we want 
into our Arduino and just control which ones we connect to one at a time by this basically one to eight switch. So here's a quick side story. When I was trying to program this MOX in my design, oh man, did I mess up. I thought the switch worked like you see here, where if you sent zero into the part, it would switch to zero. You sent a one, it would switch to one. You sent a two, you'd switch to two and switch to th send a three and you switch to three and so on and so forth. Man, was I wrong. Zero didn't work at all. One and two worked, but they worked as zero and one did, and three didn't work at all, and it was just, I was going crazy. And I finally figured out, that's not how the part works. The part works like this, where you have a series of switches, and if you put a one in the zero column, it'll turn the first switch on, and if you put a one in the second column, it'll turn the, turn the second switch on. So if you send any number besides a multiple of two to the n, it actually shorts all the buses together. So the solution for this is to, instead of sending 0, 1, 2, and 3, all you have to do is send 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. So that solved all my problems and I was off to the races. And also, a word to the wise, read the spec sheets on the parts when you buy them because Man, not reading them can waste a lot of time. Okay, so now that we've got a MUX hooked to our Arduino, we can hook up all of our sensors. So this is a quick uh, map of how I wired up the entire suit, and it's a quick reference that I used. Basically, there's two MUXs, one in your chest and one in your waist. So you have a little box that goes on your chest and a little box that goes on your waist, and the Arduino hooks to the MUX, and then... I have several sensors, but I never have more than two sensors on the bus, and each of those sensors has a different I squared C address. So basically, if you have the chest on, you can map all of your arms, and then if you have a waist assembly, you can go down to the waist and mux out to both the legs. And both the chest and the waist have their own IMUs, so I can figure out where your waist and your chest are. And your head has one assembly that you hook to your hat, and we put a piece of Velcro on a baseball cap and we hooked that sensor to it. So basically, all in all, we have 15 sensors and we use the, the muxes to hook them all up. So here's a quick peek at the schematic for the chest wiring. Now it looks really daunting, but it's really not that complicated. All the red wires are power and all the black wires are ground and I had to bust them all together so that I could have enough power and ground to go out to all the arms and legs and everywhere they needed to go. And then you see the head, left arm, right arm, and waist connectors. That blue thing in the middle bottom is the I2C multiplexer, and you can see a lot of I2C goes in and out of there per the diagram we just looked at. We have an LCD panel that we hook up that we use to display to the user what's going on. There's a big red button at the top that the user presses to control the suit. Um, I did plan on using Bluetooth, and it would have been very easy to add to the code, and I have it in the schematic, but I never implemented it because when I built the first suit, I drib dribbled glue all over the connectors and could never get it hooked up right. Um, but I wanted planned on going wireless with that, but I ended up using the SD card in production for everything we captured, so I didn't really need the Bluetooth. So this is what the chest looks like fully assembled with its 3D enclosure. The LCD display is on the top, and the A, B, and C for the right arm are connected in this photograph. Each of these parts has been 3D printed on a 3D printer, and the Blender files to do that is included in the GitHub repo. You can connect each up with a simple RJ45 connection, and you can buy cheap Ethernet connect cables to connect it all together. Here I'm hooking up a USB cable to power the chest. This connection powers the entire suit. If you wanted to go without a computer or USB cable, you can buy a cheap cell phone charger battery and plug it in through the same connection, and it'll power the suit and allow you to record to the SD card. It has a simple one button interface and when you press the button it tells the unit that to look for all of the sensors that are connected. Right now we have the left arm connected so it found the left arm but it's not finding any of the others. The suit works fine if you are missing some sensors. It just doesn't record the data for the missing sensors. After it's done initializing you can press the button again to calibrate the chest. Moving the chest around helps the IMUs to get calibrated. And then when it's done, I recommend that the user walk back and forth in a circle to further calibrate all the IMUs. The more motion they have, the more accurate and 
well calibrated they become. So I try to include about 30 seconds for the user to walk around just to uh, help with that calibration. When the timer is finally counted down to zero, you're clear to take your first measurement. So basically what comes up on the screen is a prompt asking you to press the button again to record to the SD card. If you press the button, it'll actually start recording to the SD card for all the sensors you have plugged in. But it gives you a five second countdown and asks you to start in a T-pose. The initial T-pose is used in the software in Blender to correct any skew you have on your hands and arms with the sensors. So you press the button again to stop recording and it tells you the name of the file on the SD card that it's recorded to. It then prompts you to press the button again and you can do another T-pose and another recording for as many recordings as you wish to do during the session while it's powered and recording to the file. I was going to add more buttons and make everything more complicated, but this one button interface turned out to be the best for onset use. If you go to the GitHub page and you go to the Arduino code folder, you can download the zip file and put all of the folders that are in it in your Arduino libraries folder. Then you can open the INO file that has all of the code for the suit on it. If you open it inside of the Arduino environment, you can just upload it to the Arduino. After uploading it, you can open a terminal and talk to the Arduino. Make sure that you set it to 115.2 kilobaud with no line ending. And once the code boots, it gives you a menu of everything that you can do and type into to debug your motion capture suit. You can enumerate the I2C devices, which shows you everything on the bus. So if I press E and press enter, it enumerates everything on the bus and then reprints out the, the, uh, the menu for you to decide what to do next. You can initialize available devices, read from a specific de device, set MUX port number, you can uh, calibrate SD card detect and display results. Currently, we'd, I don't have an SD card in there, but if I press D in there and press enter, it'll initialize the card and it'll fail and say, is card inserted, give you some, de some debugging advice. I did actually implement the real-time clock, so you can set the date and time, but I had some problems with it, so I didn't find it to be accurate in the design. I'm not, not sure why, but I think it, there's something about it electrically that drains the battery over time. And there's a set speed of capture that allows you speed to capture faster or slower, depending on what you set that setting to. All of these menus are controlled inside of Blender when you're in live mode, or the button, if you press it, will actually do these commands for you. So I just push the button once and now it's looking for all of the sensors on the bus. And then if you press it again, it'll start a capture. You can do these exact same things the buttons do by entering what's on this menu in manually into this Arduino environment. So I've, so I've opened the moverig.blend file from the GitHub page under Blender files. And inside of it is a character that I've weight mapped to a rig that can, uh, we can apply our captures to. You'll notice that all over the body of this character are these sensors. In the rough positions that they are in when you actually run the test or run the capture, um, you can actually adjust uh, for problems with the sensor positioning by adjusting these sensors. The script that applies the capture will take the position of each of these sensors and adjust the red in file or and apply it by the rotation of these sensors on the body. So I'll get into that a little bit more later so hopefully it'll make sense for you. But what we're going to do is we're going to take a capture that's in the, the GitHub page and apply it to this character. So the first thing we're going to do is go to scripting, and here I have a file that uh, is the accelerometer to rig file that um, dot pi that will be the script we'll use to apply our captures to this character. So I'm going to run this script, and this add-on that I wrote is added to um, the the scene. You have to have the object selected. For instance, right now, this object is in slow pose mode, but I, I made it so it only shows up in object mode. Um, so basically, if you go to the 3D view, you have this add-on over here. This live capture section is used by the script to talk directly to the suit and apply it. You can actually 
uh, connect to your rig, initialize, calibrate the sensor, and then capture and map to rig, and it'll live move this character around with your body while it's connected to the suit. Then you can disconnect from it, and you can also live capture uh, to a text file when you click this box, and it will um, then use this capture file to save out to. But we're going to um, not do that at this point. We're going to actually go to the GitHub repo, and we're going to read in one of the example files I have in the captures folder on GitHub. So I'm going to use this sit gesture uh, sigrid gestures.txt file to read on to my character. Now that that folder, um, those captures for the sit gesture are what this file is, where the character or our actress sits down and she moves her arms around and does a few actions and things like that. So uh, we're going to apply these motions to our character. So to do that, I go ahead and come in here and I read in the file and apply it to the character. Now immediately I notice that his head is twisted, or her head is twisted all the way around. Um, so we're going to try to correct that. So I didn't particularly care for that input. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out here and I'm going to delete all the keyframes on the character. And then I'm going to select the rig go to pose mode, go to A, and clear out Alt-R to clear out all the rotations, and so we can read in this file again. So I'm going to go back to object mode, select this guy, but this time I'm going to take this head uh, sensor and rotate it in the Z 180 degrees, and then I'm going to rotate it in the X to the, about the position that it's on her hat. So then when I read in the file now, notice that the head is not twisted all the way around because we adjusted the sensor to fix our problems with the head. So we're going to go back to the animation tab here. And one of the things it does is it puts the animation wherever the time frame is. So I got to move this guy back to somewhere where I want it. So I use the G key to move it back in. And I can click here and you can see our character starts out standing up and then we press uh, play to watch our character sit down and do the exact motions that we captured when uh, we did the motion capture. So we can watch her performance and we can move out to where she spreads out her arms. So here she spread out her arms and goes back and so we have our full motion capture. Um, this rig doesn't record position anywhere. It just does bone rotation. Someday I'd like to write uh, a modification to the script that uses the accelerometers to try to estimate position. But that's very difficult to do and I haven't undertaken it yet. So that's one of the limitations of the suit. So we've been using these suits for a couple years now and we found a few problems with them. Um, both of the captures I'm showing you here are pretty rough. Um, I didn't do any cleanup other than what you saw in the tutorial. Um, so you can kind of see, you know, the performance, but all the captures I have to show you, the actors move fairly slowly. We found that it's easier to, and more accurate, to record everything with the actors moving slightly slower than you normally would, just to increase the accuracy of the suit. The advantages of these suits is that you can make lots of them and you don't have to worry about tracking in a lot of rooms. So when you're doing knife or sword fights and things like that, it, 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 it works really well. Um, it does require that you calibrate and do a bunch of steps and have everything hooked up properly. Um, and the other disadvantages, like I say, I'm not trying to sell you these suits. I, I'm just putting them online for you to use and to, to, to learn from, but you can see here we've slowed down the capture to get rid of some of the jitter and the rotational measurements. We missed some of his hand gestures, but it gets the main point across. So here's that previous take we just saw, but this time I keyframed every single frame that we had a capture. So this is looking at all the data directly out of the suit. You can see it's much more accurate and gets all of his hand gestures 
but it's a little bit jittery and uh, in <clears throat> because of all the cr cleanup that would be required to make this work and we had a lot of shots to do we decided to take a new strategy this next next take is the same performance but we had the actor walk very slowly and we're keyframing every six frames in the script. So when you walk slowly, you get a much more accurate and less jittery uh, performance and it came out a lot better in the end. I did want to do some jitter removal in the script, but I never got time to do it. So this was our solution in production. So that's it. Thank you for watching and happy capturing.